Hey there, everybody. I uh, just want to make a quick video about the uh, airflow meter AFM for the 22RE series of engines. And uh, I've got a 1985 uh, Toyota pickup with the 22RE in it. And I just rebuilt the motor and it was having, it was running great most of the time, but then they would have these random uh, misfires and sometimes you start the engine up and uh, after the uh, first uh, 20 or 30 seconds, it would start start missing. And it seemed uh, very random and inc inconsistent. Sometimes it would run okay, sometimes not. So I ended up tracing it back to the airflow meter um, by doing some tests. Um, if you pull up the factory service manual, you can see the tests you do with a multimeter and you're checking for the resistance um, and continuity on, on some of the terminals. I'm not going to go into too much detail with that, but I just want to share my experience with uh, opening these things up and checking out the internals. Um, as I found that um, you may be able to salvage one of these by cleaning the contacts and the resistive strip. So um, this is the one that came out of the truck and you can see the part numbers there. And this is the one that I ordered which is a uh, Cardone remanufactured unit. And the numbers lined up to fit um, with my engine. And it's actually a very different um, Denso and Toyota part number that's actually meant for a, uh, I think a 1982 Toyota Supra. As you can see, they're pretty much identical units. Uh, one of the ma major differences is they have a plastic plug that they've put in probably in the remanufacturing process. Um, and as you can see on the original, there's just a, uh, a metal plug that's pressed in there, it looks like. But anyways, the plug connector is identical in shape and pins. Sizes of everything are correct. And um, when I test this on the uh, multimeter, uh, they're similar, if not the same, same readings you would expect from, from this part number. Um, so I ended up opening up the original airflow meter. And what you have to do first is you have to cut along the edge here and it's sealed with a, a silicone. And if it's ever been opened up, you may be able to see how it's been uh, resealed, you know, just with the general silicone uh, sealant. And so you cut along that into this groove and this is just a channel that they put in so that you can, the sealant has a place to go in there and make a nice, um, watertight seal. So you cut along all the way around and then stick a screwdriver or something. Let's see, I've already had this one out so I'm just going to see if I can pop it up with the razor blade here. And get a corner up and it just pulls off like that. It's going to be a little more difficult the first time you are undoing it because it's impossible to cut the silicone um, cleanly everywhere. But anyways, once you do get it open this is what you're looking at inside. And uh, let me get something to point here. So here is your resistive strip right here. Well, this is actually, I'm not sure if this is the actual resistor part of it, but this is what the metal contacts, the, cop, the copper colored contacts right here, ride along. And then I believe the resistors are actually these little spots within the, in between the, the electrical traces, but I'm not sure exactly how that works, but I know that's how, that's how the, the circuit works and how the resistance varies like a wave as the air door moves. So the air comes in through here from your air cleaner box and depending on how much air the engine is taking, it's going to push this vein open and that is turning this arm here and riding those um, contactors on that strip. And that's what's causing your different um, resistance values uh, between pins. It's, uh, I believe it's E2 and VS. So it's the third one in from the left. So it's that one right there, right at the tip of my fingernail. And the second one from the right. So those are the ones you're gonna be measuring. And what you can actually do is if you have the factory vacuum tubing or something similar in size, 
you can actually stick these in here on the pins. Another one here. There we go. You can stick them in there, and then with your multimeter, you can stick the probes in there. There we go, stick those in there, and then we've got a solid contact between the probes and the terminals. Then we change to ohms. And as you can see, at the closed position, this one's measuring about 250 ohms. And the problem I was having with mine, and what was causing the engine issues, and I tested this on the vehicle, you can do this on the vehicle and you're, get your baseline reading for at least where it is with the, with the, the air door closed. And you can see if it's if it's close. Um, with the door closed, it's supposed to be uh, between 20 and 400 ohms. So as you can see, this is about 300. And then as you press on the door, like air would be coming in there, you can see it goes up. And then it goes down again. And then it starts going up. But see that right there? See that little blip in the meter? So that went to basically no contact. So it went to an infinite resistance. And when I first tested this, it was doing this a lot, all the way across um, different positions. See, there's another one. Uh, so different positions of the vein that was occurring. And you can see as I go back and forth, it hits these spots. And when I first tested it, it was really bad. So I was like, well, let's see, maybe we can take this apart and clean something and see if that helps. And as you can see, let me see if I can focus on this. See those two little tracks, track marks or grooves that the, the contacts of that copper um, arm armature, that's where they're riding on. And what happens is it makes a groove and the deeper that groove gets, the less reliable this connection gets. And what can also happen is uh, underneath that contact or the copper colored piece, there's little pins and those can get dirty and uh, then you'll get um, you'll get erroneous results as um, depending on where that arm is on the uh, on the strip that it's contacting so what you want to do is try to clean that strip there the black strip and <clears throat> it's kind of kind of tricky to get in there but we can use a a small piece of microfiber cloth. I actually use a small piece of this towel here, which is made for cleaning glass, but it's a microfiber. And then use some contact cleaner. Um, you could probably also use denatured alcohol with pretty good success with that. You just don't want to get anything too, too soaking wet in here, but I think this is a pretty robust uh, little piece of uh, electronic circuitry. Um, anyways, so you want to clean that up. And what you can actually do is you can take this whole arm off. See that? See that um, bolt there? You need a three millimeter Allen key, and that will fit into there. And you just stick that on there. It can be kind of tough to get out. If you have a little, if you have an impact driver with a bit, a three millimeter hex bit, that would probably work better for getting this off. Because what's hap going to happen is you're going to try to turn that and it's gonna move the whole arm. So what you can do is you can get it all the way to the stop here and then you can then you can crank on it to get it loose. Take that, take that bolt out and this whole part, you're gonna wiggle it back and forth and it's just on a shaft and it's gonna pop off. And so then you can have that free and have the whole strip there open for cleaning. And then you can turn this over and on the back side you'll see the little um, the pins that, that make contact. You can use a uh, contact cleaner. I actually use some um, Scotch-Brite pad. So you could probably actually use just like a kitchen sponge or um, just a very, very fine steel wool just to polish those pins up. You don't want them to be abrasive or rough or anything, so be careful with that. You want them to be polished smooth and, and then give them a final cleaning with some contact cleaner or uh, denatured alcohol, trying not to get any lint anywhere, anything like that. Um, on this, as you saw, you know, even after cleaning it, I was still getting those spots where it was going to uh, 
you know, open contact or infinite resistance. And so as the engine's running, if that happens, then all of a sudden there, the, uh, the car doesn't know, the ECU doesn't know how much air is going through. And so then it probably goes to some sort of default um, metering program or value for how much fuel uh, that, you know, the injectors are gonna put into the engine. So that can cause, obviously, your engine to run very rich or very lean and uh, cause that roughness. And so that's what my issue was. So I ended up getting a Cardone remanufactured uh, airflow meter and see that that number is 74, 2000 or 20004. Um, that's the Cardone part number. And then if you look at the top here, you'll see this part number. And so that's different from the one that came on the truck, but as you can see, they're very similar. And um, like this, like I said, this is the one that supposedly came off the this 82 Supra, but it's exactly the same thing as what my understanding is. So uh, I got this in the mail and decided I would just test it real quick before I put it on the vehicle. I've already got my meter out. Um, I've got my little pieces of, of, um, of the vacuum hosing. So I plugged it in and I checked it. And I checked uh, all the other terminal um, tests that you do, uh, which are just checking for um, you know resistance values within a range. You don't have to necessarily move the vein. Uh, you actually do have to on one of the tests where you're checking for the, there's a um, contactor here at the bottom, you can see, and that's for the fuel pump relay. So when the, when the vehicle's off and it's not taking any air in, the engine's off, um, this door will be closed and these contacts, well, it's just, you can see it's just barely open in between there. But when the door opens just a little bit, it moves that little metal arm in to make contact. Let me see if I can point this out with the exacto knife. So right here, this is where the contact is made. Um, <clears throat> so you're checking for continuity there based on whether the door is open or closed. And so this keeps the fuel pump off until you're cranking that engine and it's starting to suck air in through the intake. Anyway, so test that and then tested, um, a couple of other things they, uh, in the manual, um, and everything was in spec, but then I tested the, um, that E2 to VS and the numbers were all over the place and there was open open contact and and the resistance values were way off and uh this is kind of dumbfounded me because this is supposed to be re remanufactured um, they say all wear parts are replaced and such like that i don't know if they actually replace this circuit board in here with the contacts and resistors and all that um it still has um grooves i've already opened this up to fix it so let me pop this cover off so you can see this one actually has grooves pretty much pretty much very similar to the ones on mine maybe a little less deep i'm not sure but anyways this was kind of um it had some like a film of something like almost like a flux residue or whatever left over i'm not sure if they just didn't get to the get to a final cleaning process uh, quality control missed that but either way it was getting bad readings so I took this one apart as well and I took that arm off I polished the contacts cleaned everything up cleaned that uh, strip with contact cleaner and the microfiber and put it back together and uh, put the meter on it and it's it flawed the output from that e2 to vs is uh, flawless so I guess I've res resurrected this one, and uh, this is one will go back in my truck. And then the, the other one, the old one, original, I think I might try to clean it again and polish those contacts. Um, actually, I'm not sure if I polished the contacts on this one or if just used the contact cleaner. But anyways, we'll take that apart and try that again and see if we can get this one working and have it as a backup or sell it on eBay, perhaps. Uh, the other thing that you can adjust in these boxes is the spring tension for uh, for the door, uh, this mechanism here basically. And that's gonna change um, change the values that the, the computer sees and change um, 
you know, kind of the baseline mixture setting for the for the engine, how lean or how how rich it is. So what you can do is you loosen this screw here. You loosen that up and that will allow you to bend this spring back and you can move this whole um, cog uh, <clears throat> to adjust that default tension. And when you do this, before you do this, make sure you make a mark where that spring is located on the wheel. Because what, ha what will happen is if you loosen this up and you move that move the spring wire out of position, the spring tension will actually cause this wheel to turn. And it can happen really quickly and then you have no idea what the, what the baseline <clears throat> uh, setting was. And that comes from the factory and you really shouldn't have to adjust these, but some people do with success. And you're really only gonna be moving it one, two, maybe three, three uh, notches with the cog and that's that's assuming though that you know everything else with the engine is dialed in factory spec no vacuum leaks or anything like that uh, throttle position sensor all that stuff but you can experiment with that and um people i've read on forums that people have had success with adjusting that and getting their engine dialed in uh, where it where it likes to be um let's see i think that's about it for my overview of this and then just put it back together, put the cover in, put the cover on there and press it down in, and then you're gonna wanna do some new silicone sealant around the outside to keep that protected from the elements. Anyways, uh, I thought this might be helpful for somebody that's troubleshooting their airflow meter in a, on a 22 RE. Uh, this is the, uh, like I said again, the 84 to 88 version of this airflow meter for the 22 RE. And uh, after that, I think 85, to 92 or something like that. It's a different style. I'm not sure how much different it is or if these can be interchanged. I've, I've read um, really quickly on some forums that maybe they are, but I'm not sure. If anybody knows that, feel free to comment. I'm sure that would help people out. I'm not sure if the plug uh, connector is any different or anything else with them. I know the shape of the cover is different. It's got a rounded end instead of this uh, um, squared off with just these um, radius corners. It's got a actual arc around. Anyways, hopefully this was helpful to somebody out there and uh, I hope this solves some of your airflow meter questions and issues that you might be having. Thanks for watching.